Hello and welcome to the One Page Marketing Action Plan. This is a working video. You will make your plan while while you're watching. So make sure you're ready to do so. You will need some paper and a pen. A printout of the worksheet would be super helpful, but if you don't have it, that's okay. You can sketch out the drawing on a piece of paper. It's not hard. If you have post-it notes, it would be great if you had them handy. Uh, grab yourself a, a glass of water or tea, coffee, something like that. Uh, a glass of wine if you're doing it this at night. <laughs> uh, and close down your distractions. Take one hour for your business for planning and focusing on what you want to achieve over the next little while. Facebook can wait. You can get uh, back to those messages later on. Uh, you'll be glad that you did this. <laughs> so here's the thing about planning. Uh, people tend to fall into uh, specific groups and sometimes you may find yourself moving from one group to another. But some of us are really, really good at vision and dreams and we've got a really clear idea of where we want to be in the future and then struggle to figure out, okay, what are the exact concrete actions that I need to take in order to get there? Whereas other people are really good with the activity and getting stuff done and checking off zillions of things off the to-do list and find that that doesn't necessarily lead them to where they want to go. A lot of activity but not a lot of progress. Uh, some people love uh, planning. They have complicated, detailed plans, Gantt charts, 45-page business plan documents, that kind of thing. And other people are more of a wing it <laughs> type without any plan at all. And as many people who have taken this program have said, wow, I see myself in some of those groups at different times. So I know I personally can move between these groups, although I tend to be the kind of person who has a lot of long-term vision and is not all that big on planning. So if you fall into that group where planning has never really worked out for you, prepare yourself to be pleasantly surprised with this system. I know I was when I learned it. It completely transformed everything that I am doing. So here's the problem with planning and why some of us really avoid it is because we know um, that we don't know. We don't know how things are going to work and especially in terms of marketing. We have no idea that what we're going to do in terms of marketing is going to is, is actually going to work because it depends on how other people will respond. Uh, we can't know for sure, we can't see the future, and everything changes. Uh, our actions cause changes. Your situation will be different three months from now because of the actions that you take today. Technology changes all the time. Uh, who knows what kind of social media will be the best uh, place to be in three years from now. And of course we grow and we change and what we wanted six months ago might not be what we want today and how can we guess what the person that we're going to be in three years will want. So it's really easy to brush off planning because of these reasons. But th at the same time, if you have no idea where you're going, how will you get there? You can end up wandering around aimlessly for a long time. So I love this statement by Martin Luther King Jr. You don't have to see the whole staircase in order to take the first step. And that's what we are going to do today. We're going to put together a plan that will map out your ultimate destination, at least in terms of what you think you want right now in this moment, and outline a path to get there and provide the immediate next steps. I liken this whole thing to having where you want to go at the top of a mountain and the path is winding around and around and around the mountain in a spiral fashion up to the top so you can't actually see the entire path. But as long as you can see the first few steps and as long as you know you're headed up, you know you're on the right track. The system that I'm going to teach you today, you can use to plan your entire life. It's a magical planning tool that will work for all sorts of things. I had an email from someone who'd taken the plan. She was so excited that she says, I use that plan to, to plan out the renovations of my house. So you can use it for anything in your life. However, for today, I'm going to invite you to focus just on your business. Try not to um, 
smush your personal plans in with your business plans, even if you are a solopreneur and your business feels like it is your life, it can get very confusing <laughs> very quickly. So focus for today just on your business. If you are updating your plan, if you've done this already and you're creating your updated plan for the quarter, I'm going to invite you to set the old one aside. You don't have to trash it, you don't have to shred it, but put it out of sight and just check in to see where you're at right now. So start a new plan and you can compare them later and see how they change over time, but don't um, put yourself in that box of having to continue with the plan you created three months ago. Your new plan may be very similar or it might be very different. For the purpose of this exercise, uh, put on your business owner hat. This is an opportunity to work on your business instead of in it. And that means that if you've got client projects on the go, they don't belong on this plan. This is for your business. And if you take a look at the screen and you'll see the position that this cartoon character is in with his hands behind his head, that is a powerful, confident position. And I would invite you actually to take that position right now, to, to put your hands behind your, behind your head and to feel really confident about what you're doing because you don't want to let fear or doubt get in the way. You're just going to be the big boss today when you make the plan. And just assume that you are smart enough to figure out how to get over those challenges and how to take action in the face of fear. So put on, put on that hat of being the boss and you can even pretend that you've got underlings who will execute all of the things that you put on your plan. So here's what makes this process work. Uh, there's a method to the magic and I'll tell you about that right now. It's first of all a limited space. Stick to the one page that you have been given. <laughs> There's a reason for that. It keeps you from overcomplicating it. It keeps it in simple terms. If you can't use a lot of words, you won't use a lot of words. And magically, you'll, man you'll manage to condense your ideas into a small amount of space. Uh, secondly, there's a limited amount of time and this prevents you from overthinking. Don't take three hours to complete each section. When I say pause the video and take two minutes, I mean two minutes, maybe three, five if you really want to ponder over it, but don't spend a lot of time overthinking it. When you think quickly, you can access your intuition. You can surprise yourself with what shows up on that piece of paper. And keep in mind that this is not carved in stone. It's a single sheet of paper. It only takes an hour to put together. If you really hate the plan, uh, you can shred it. You can change your mind and redo it tomorrow. And I would encourage you to make changes and to update it. If it doesn't sit right after a couple of weeks and you want to change something, you want to update your goal, you want to remove a project that you've chosen, you are free to do so and I highly recommend it. So this is a good starting place. It'll give you a nice little map to get going. And if there's anything on that you want to change at any time, you are free to do so. You do not have to stick with this plan as though it were carved in stone. All right. So here we go. We're going to get underway. Grab your worksheet or sketch this out on a piece of paper. We're going to work in four different sections here. And we're going to start off with the vision. Three years from now. So imagine, it's three years from now and you're looking back on an awesome year. It's been amazing. <laughs> what you're wanting here is a stretch. You want something that feels achievable and yet is on the far edge of what you believe you are capable of. It should not be, oh yeah, well this is where I'll be in three years, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> it shouldn't be super easy cakewalk, but not a fantasy either. This is not the, oh, I've got my own private island and umpteen billion dollars in the bank. Uh, that is not realistic for three years five years maybe, but not three. <laughs> so it needs to feel achievable, but a stretch. In particular, how much money do you want to make? Come up with a number. It doesn't matter if you're thinking in terms of gross or net. Uh, this isn't an accounting exercise. <laughs> Whatever number feels like a good stretch for you, how much money did you make? If you know how many clients that would take or you have a ballpark figure of how many clients that would take, you can write down that number. Same as for your contact list size, your mailing list, if you have a blog or newsletter 
readership number of subscribers that you think you would like to have at that point. If you don't have numbers for that, that's okay. Um, and what are you doing? What are you doing in your business? How much time are you working? Is this a slowing down in three years or is this just a ramping up? Uh, are you looking at long vacations and short hours or are you looking to be going full full tilt at it and working and still working really hard? Um, how, how do you see that in three years? And how big is your company? Are you growing beyond just you? Do you have an assistant? Are you growing it out into something much bigger? Or are you happy just to, to stay as a solopreneur? And where's your market? Are you just working locally or do you have your eyes set on an international business, whether you're traveling to speak or uh, conducting business online? Uh, what, what's your trading area? And how about your reputation and recognition? Are you looking for a degree of, of um, recognition in your community or in um, an association you belong to? Or what does that look like? A lot of my clients are uh, speakers <laughs> and they're looking for a fair bit of recognition. Uh, are there any projects that you have that you'd like to have completed by the end of three years? Uh, a popular one that comes up is write a book. Is there a book that you want to write? Is there a program that you want to develop? Is there something that you're going to have on that done list at the end of three years? So write down your notes for this, for your three-year vision. If you're not quite completed with that right now, you may pause the video for a minute or two to flesh that out. But set a timer. Don't um, don't spend 20 minutes agonizing over this. It's what comes up for you right now. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Write it down in that uh, square paper, and then we'll move on to the next section. Okay. Now that you have your vision. How was that for you? When you look at that vision, how do you feel about it? What do you notice? When I ask this question on my live webinars, I tend to get a response that sounds like it's really exciting and also a little bit scary. And that's really what you're shooting for, is it should be exciting and a bit scary. So if that's how it feels to you, then yay, you've done this correctly. If it feels boring and blah, 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 it's, um, you, you didn't push it big enough and it feel, and if it feels totally overwhelming and unachievable and you don't believe even in the slightest that it's going to happen, then you need to revisit it and maybe scale it back. Uh, the feeling that you're going for here is exciting and a tad bit scary. All right. The middle portion is the goals for the next 12 months and the purpose of this section is to break down that three-year vision into the first step, the first one-third of the way there. So what we're looking for here is the gap between where you are now at the end of last year and where you want to be in your three-year vision. So your one-year goal should be about one-third of the way there. I'll give you a couple of examples of how this would look. So let's say you have an established business and last year you made $100,000. Your three-year goal is to make $250,000. So what do you need to do in the first year in order to take one step towards your goal? And the way I have this mapped out here is that last year was 100, so if next year is 150, the year following that is 200, and then the third year is 250. We've broken up that gap into three steps. If you're just starting out, you might be looking at now, <laughs> last year is nothing or next to nothing. So you're starting from scratch, and let's say your goal is to make that first hundred thousand dollars in three years. In this case you may want to make the first step a little bit smaller because you'll need to do a lot of foundational stuff and putting in your systems and you can expect that when you have that all established that you can grow more in the years to come. So for right now break that down. What is about a third of the way to where you want to go. How much money is that? How many clients is that? If you know. 
How many people do you need on your list? Are there completed projects that you want to have done this year? Is this year the year for your book? Maybe you're wanting to develop a website or put together a specific program. At the end of this year, when you look back, what do you want to have done? Perhaps you need to uh, develop some business and marketing systems in order to prepare for that future growth and success. If you're in a slowing down um, kind of a place in your business, maybe you're needing to look at a succession plan or what are you going to do to slow down? How, or maybe if you're bringing on an assistant, that might be uh, a goal for this year. So in that section for the 12 month goals, write down what you want to have completed at the end of this year. If you don't have that uh, finished right now, you may pause the video for a minute or two to, to complete your thoughts. Okay, so now if you achieved these goals, if at the end of the year you look back and go, yes, got them all, would you be on track to meet your goals for the three years. As long as your answer to this question is yes, then you've done this correctly. So these should take, the, the goals for this year should take you one step further. Okay, we have now reached the bridge. It's really easy in some ways to have a vision and to, you know, pull numbers out of a hat and make stuff up and say, yeah, here's a nice vision of the future. And then it comes down to, okay, what are the exact actions that need to take place in order to get to that vision? And this is the bridge. So for those of you who are really good with the visioning stuff, yes, we were crossing into the stuff that's a little bit harder. Now we're going to take those dreams and break them down into actual action steps. Starting with projects. And these are projects for the next 90 days. I would actually invite you to think about the next six months. What are the projects that need to happen in your business for the next six months in order to achieve those one-year goals? When I say this, the response tends to be, huh? <laughs> so I'm going to give you uh, some specific examples and ideas of projects that you can complete that will take you towards your goals. Because it can be really hard to say, okay, I want to make $100,000. What do I do? <laughs> so, First of all, what's a project? A project is a group of tasks. The size of your project is up to you. Some people like smaller ones. Some people like... as a, a, some people are happy with a longer list of short projects. Other people want a shorter list of longer projects. It's whatever works for you. But it's a group of tasks. It's typically not something you can sit down and complete in, um, you know, in one sitting. It might take a few days. It may take a few months to complete. But whatever you call a project is fine by you. Whatever works for you. There are different types of projects. We in immediately think about action projects, taking action, getting stuff done. However, there may be some things that you choose that you don't know how to do yet, or you don't know what the options are. So there are research projects, and that is just what it sounds like. It's figuring out what are the options, what, are my, what do I choose from? As an example, let's say the project that you named for your business was to market on social media. The first step there might be figuring out which social media platform you're going to market on. That's a research project to learn a little bit about what those social media platforms are about and how to choose one that would be right for your business. The other kind of project would be a learning project, which is how do I do it? So. Um, you may choose Facebook, but you don't know how to use Facebook. So the, it would be a learning project to learn how to use Facebook to market my business. Uh, another kind of project could be a planning project. What are all the steps? You may have an idea of what you need to do, but it feels all messy and jumbly in your head that you don't know step by step what to do first and in what order. That's a planning project to plan that out of exactly how you will get it done. What are all the steps? When do they need to happen? When do they need to take place? Um, so it could be a planning project. And the other kind of project could be a practice. And what I say by practice is, is it doesn't end. It's something that you do on a regular basis in your business. 
let's say for example that you wanted to uh, use blogging to promote your business um, a project might be to set up your blog and to get it ready and to do all of the technical stuff that's required in order to have a blog and then the practice would be blogging on a regular basis so these are the kinds of things that you want to identify right now that will take your business forward so the title of this is one page marketing action plan and in general if you've got financial goals for your business if you have clients that you need to service in order to make money in order to to have a successful business that all comes down to marketing and marketing is all about the process of attracting the attention of a stranger who needs your services doing that mysterious thing represented by that blue arrow to turn them into a happy paying client so I'm going to show you the three stages of marketing because what you need to do for your business is going to depend on where you want to focus in your marketing, how long you've been in business, the kind of challenges that you have, and I'm going to give you suggestions for all of those. So beginning with the stages of marketing, when you talk about getting the attention of strangers who need your services, that's lead generation bringing in new strangers for you to talk to. Uh, the middle part, the arrow, that's a conversion part of marketing. That's where you've got somebody who's sort of interested and that's that magical thing that happens between kind of interested and becomes a client. The third stage of marketing is retention. You've done business with somebody, they are a client. How do you keep them as a client? Are there additional things that you can offer to them? How do you get them to help you market your business? Can you get referrals from them? How can you continue to um, keep that person as a happy client? So that's the retention part of marketing. And each three of these stages need different marketing projects. And of course, it doesn't go all linear <laughs> from, you know, go out, meet somebody, have a conversation, they become a client. It doesn't all happen at the same time. Sometimes it can be a fair amount of time between the time that somebody comes into your world for the very first time and the time that they become a paying client. It can take weeks, in some cases months or even years. So you need to look at all of those stages over time and having a sales funnel or a pipeline, however you want to describe it, of continuing continually bringing in new leads, converting them into clients, and then keeping in touch with them over time and keeping them in your world. <laughs> so, so in terms of projects for the next six months, marketing projects, what we're, our, um, our goal here is to list out a bunch of projects that you want to achieve in one year in order to reach your goal. I'm going to go through suggestions based on where you're at in your business and as I do so if I say something that sounds like oh that's a good idea write it down on the list of projects. It's okay for you to have too many projects at this time. We will cut down the list later so feel free to take up as much space as you want in that final section of the pieces of paper. Okay. So if you are just starting your business, if you can relate to that example of starting from nothing or next to nothing, these are the projects that you need to do first in your business. You need to have something to sell. So uh, putting together your service packages, putting prices on it, uh, coming up with a sales page or a flyer or something that you can give to people saying, hey, this is what I have for sale and this is how much it costs. That's a project for you. Uh, you need to have somebody who's going to buy. So putting together an ideal client profile, uh, target market niche, whatever you want to call it, but having an idea of who it is that you are after. Um, in terms of, of getting clients is another project. You also need a sales process. Um, you have somebody that's interested in your services. What do you say to them? What is that conversation? What are the documents? What needs to happen to put that, put that deal together? And I highly recommend that you have a tracking system right from the beginning of your business that lets you know um, where your clients came from, what marketing is working. As, as a solopreneur, uh, you can't afford to waste a lot of time um, doing things that don't pay off. So tracking system, super important. Um, the little diagram there that says fill your practice, I have a program that will walk you through all of these things. So as a shorthand for this, you can say, hey, check out Patty's fill your practice program. Ha -ha. So that's just getting started. 
Let's say you've been in business for a while and you're good at sales. Um, if you talk to 10 people, maybe seven or eight or nine of them sign up with you. Uh, but the problem that you're having in your business is you just don't have enough strangers to talk to. <laughs> uh, you know, if, if they meet you for coffee and you have your discussion, you end up with a client most of the time, but you don't have enough of those coffee meetings, well, then you're looking at lead generation projects. How do you get the word out to more people? Um, networking, it might be social media, it could be going on a speaking tour, it could be uh, developing some affiliate programs or referral programs, uh, developing a mailing list, a newsletter, uh, some sort of a, a subscription, it could be advertising, there are a zillion different ways that you can generate leads for your business. But if this is your situation where you're good with the sales but you're not getting enough leads, my suggestion is to focus in on lead generation bringing in more strangers will increase your revenue in this situation. So um, lead generation projects is a couple of examples there, but there's other things that you could consider. Um, if none of these really strike you as great, it could be a research project to figure out, okay, how do I generate more leads? <laughs> so, good at sales, but not enough leads, lead generation projects. On the other hand, some people have a lot of leads, but not very many of them buy. So if you're in this situation where, let's say, you have stacks of business cards on your desk and you've got no idea what to say to people in order to follow up, or you have uh, meeting after meeting after meeting, but nobody actually buys from you, um, you know, you meet 10 people, maybe one person buys, maybe nobody buys, you're having a lot of conversations that go nowhere. I'll tell you, if this is your situation, you do not need more leads. This is no, forget what anyone has said about this is a numbers game. You need to focus on conversion to make those leads pay off. Um, and in that case, look at some conversion projects. One of them could be creating a ladder, ladder of offerings. Maybe some of the people that you've been talking to would actually do business with you if you had something else to offer them. So it could be that you need to expand your offerings, that you have other things to sell that would be more interesting to the people you're talking to. You may need an ideal client profile because the problem that you're having is you're talking to a lot of people that are not potential buyers. So you're wasting your time, you're wasting theirs. If they're not fitting um, a description of uh, the kinds of people that you help and the kinds of people who are willing to buy from you, then that's not going to work. It might be that your sales process is totally messed up. If you're winging it, if you're not sure what to say, if you find yourself in this in this loop where you think that maybe they're kind of interested but you're not sure how to close the sale and you're not certain where to lead the conversation or if it keeps getting off track, um, you may need to look at um, implementing a good sales project. Uh, process and that'd be a great project to have for conversion. It might be follow-up. Maybe people are slipping through your fingers because you're not being in touch with them and you're losing their contact information and you're forgetting to get back to them. So follow-up system could be brilliant for you. Uh, if you're getting a lot of traffic to your website and nobody is calling you or contacting you, Fixing up your web content and your sales pages could be really helpful. Even if you're spending time out there networking, uh, talking to people one-on-one, -on -one, exchanging business cards, the first thing that people often do is check out your website to see what you have to offer. And you could be missing a lot of deals that way if your website isn't up to snuff in terms of um, backing up your uh, your efforts talking to people in per in person. And in that case, it's typically a content problem, sales page, uh, having strong sales pages, strong calls to action. So that could be a really good conversion project as well, is to do something with your website content. And uh, mailing lists, putting together a mailing list. Uh, uh, MailChimp is, a, is an example, something that allows you to keep in touch with people. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the whole idea of it, it going over time. The people you meet today might not be ready to buy for six months, but in six months you need to make sure that they remember that you're there. Um, the subliminal marketing on the sides of the page here, uh, Fill Your Practice program covers a lot of this um, content, including what to do in that sales process, and I've got an online marketing intensive that will help with the uh, website content and mailing list, that kind of thing. All right, uh, let's say you have lots of customers, but they're not coming back. Uh, 
In this case, you can look at some retention projects, which might be developing additional offerings. Hey, you help people with stage one of their problem. Maybe some of those people that you've already worked with have another problem that you can solve and maybe developing a different offer for that and then going back to those clients might be the easiest way to give your business a boost. Um, if you, if there's a reason why people can come back to you on a regular basis but they're not, um, maybe you've got a customer service issue, maybe, maybe those people aren't happy and that might be a project for you to undertake is to figure out what's going on there and to fix that up. Or maybe it's just because they're forgetting about you, so that could be implementing a follow-up system or a database uh, program to help you keep in touch with the people who've already bought from you. These are the people, if they already know, like, and trust you, they've experienced your services, assuming that they're happy, these are the easiest people for you to uh, sell additional services to. Um, this particular slide tends to get a lot of, oh, that's me, <laughs> the whole idea of feast and famine or feeling disorganized and scattered. If you feel like you're constantly on this this hamster wheel of um, scurrying to, br to bring in some business, then you've done that and then you're working on client projects but you're not doing any marketing and then you finish the client projects and then you're like, oh, I've got no clients and you have to go back out and scurry to get um, additional uh, work in the door. That's the feast and famine pattern. And what you're wanting to look at here are implementing systems. So I mentioned earlier the idea of practices. Putting together marketing that doesn't take a lot of time but goes on a regular basis. So even when you're busy with clients you still take a few minutes each week to keep feeding your marketing system so that that um, you're continuing to market even while you're working so you can keep that pipeline or funnel full. This might be uh, a follow-up system, keep in touch system uh, uh, to help you with that. It could be if you're feeling disorganized and scattered or there's too overwhelmed, there's too much to do. It could be about time management, having a system to track your time, to know where it's going and having a tracking system so you know what marketing is paying off for you. Um, if you know what efforts are paying off, it makes it easier for you to say, oh, I'm not going to do that anymore and just cross things off your list and make yourself some time to work on the things that actually give you results. It might also be time for you to delegate some of that work. Maybe you are not the best person to be doing some of the admin work. Um, that is leaving you feeling disorganized and scattered and maybe bringing someone on to help you with that would be a good idea. Um, if that's the case for you, a lot of people go, oh, I've got no idea where to start with that. Uh, write down under projects, read the e-myth revisited by Michael Gerber. It will tell you exactly how to do that. And finally, because we're doing this in the summer, um, if you're experiencing a summer slump or if it's typical in your business for things to slow down in the summer, you may want to pay some close attention to this for your next 90 days. Is uh, What are you going to do with that summer slump? Uh, one of the things that you could do is you could just accept that, hey, it is going to be slower in the summer and I'm going to take advantage of that and use that extra time to develop some systems for the business, to work on the business instead of um, uh, working on client work because I've got more time, can put together some systems, maybe develop some new products or services to announce in the fall. Uh, you can also look at this as an opportunity to get out there and, and to actively market your business while your competition maybe is taking more time off. So some people uh, market right through the summer. It's a total myth when people say, oh, nobody works in the summer. That's so not true. Lots of people take holidays in the summer and lots of people continue right on working. So they are out there. A lot of the networking groups close down for the summer, but the ones that continue to operate sometimes attract pretty pretty good crowds. So people are out there marketing and they may have more time to talk to you if business is a little bit slower for them. So you can consider um, maybe putting together a seasonal offer for your existing clients. Is there something that you can help them with? If they're slower during the summer, maybe that would be a good time for them to do a project with you. Um, you can also engage in more casual networking. There are all kinds of barbecues and outdoor kind of events that are happening in the summer, a little more casual. And it could be a great way to meet people when they're feeling a little bit more relaxed and a little less frenzied. You may find that people are more willing to meet you for, for a coffee or for a beverage or something like that. 
Uh, and you can make direct contact with people. Um, might be more accessible at their desk, uh, pick up the phone or send them an email, that kind of thing. Uh, the other thing to consider too is if it's going to be slow, this might be a really good time for you to take some time off, to take some downtime, to engage in some self-care and to get yourself all rested up and energetic come the fall. So there's a couple of suggestions there for, for what you can do in terms of a summer slump. So hopefully by now you've got a, a list of projects uh, in order to complete that one year goal. And if that list is really, really long, don't worry because we're going to look after that right now. <laughs> um, first step is looking at that list, if you completed them all or even if you just completed most of them, would you be on track to meet your goals for the year? Uh, this is one of those gazing into the crystal ball things where it's not going to be entirely certain that what you've got on there um, will absolutely work, but if you feel that it's got a good chance of working, then you are totally on the right track uh, for having this plan work for you. So we are almost done. What you're going to do right now, and I invite you to do this without thinking, is pick three of them. Pick three of the projects from that list and put a circle around them. You can pick the ones that seem the easiest, the ones that seem like they're going to make the biggest difference, or the ones that are just obvious that they need to happen first, and circle them. Those are the now list, and all the rest are the later list. You've got them written down, you won't forget about them, but for right now you're not going to focus on them. We're just going to work with the first three. You can update this list anytime you want. You can take projects off that you don't want to do. You can add ones that you've forgotten. Uh, this is a great central little place for you to, to keep track of all the things that you want to do. So right now you've got three. And we are now at the action part. So you'll see uh, the example I've got on the screen right now. You've got three projects chosen. What you want to do now is grab your post-it notes and you're going to use one post-it note for each one of those projects and what you want to write on there is what is the immediate first step and it has to be an action when you look at that post-it note with that action you need to know exactly how to do it, it none of those post-it notes should have you scratching your head going oh I've got no idea where to get started it has to be an action it should take five minutes or less it should be like really an instant action to get started um, if you don't know what the first step is, it's probably a research project. The first step is probably type this phrase into Google <laughs> um, to start learning about it. And the key with this is all you need on that post-it note is enough information to get you started. So you don't have to list all of the steps, just the first one. So your plan will look like this. One post-it note for each one of the projects listing the first step that you need to take. And to check to make sure you've done the post-it note, right? Just ask yourself, if you did those things on the post-it note, would you be on track to completing those projects? It should obviously be a yes. And then this is the action part of the system. Without this part, this plan is totally useless. You need to take action. So what, what to do is to take some time every week to work on your action plan and to do at least the next step for each project each week. You will probably do more once you get started. If you set aside an hour or two every week to work on these projects, you grab one of those post-it notes, you get started on it, you do that first step and then you do the next step and the next step and the next step and then when you're finished working for the day on that project, you replace that old post-it note with a new one that has the next step. This way when you go back to working on your plan next week you will know exactly where to get started. And that's the whole magic of this system is that when you have that time set aside to work on your marketing action plan you look at that and you see three post-it notes and they all have logical first easy to implement first steps of action that will keep you working towards completing those projects. When you've completed the project, you can put a star next to it, you can um, cross it out and circle the next one. It looks a little bit like this. Yay! Done the first project. 
Now you've got two left. Now there's two ways to do this. Uh, one way is to pick another project. So you've always got three projects on the go at any one time. So you pick another project and make a post-it note with the first step for that. This can work really well if you're the kind of person who likes to have choice. <laughs> so you're sitting down to work on your marketing action plan and this will give you three different projects that you could work on. So you always have a, a choice of what you're going to do next. And it feels a little less boxed in than some of the plans that make you do things in a certain order. Uh, option two, this is the one that I personally use because if given choice, there's always going to be a project on this list that I will never get around to. I will just keep replacing it with different projects. So what I do is I make sure that I do all three projects before I put get to pick three new ones. So in this case, I cross off the first one, then I cross off the second one, and I force myself to work on that third one until it is off the list. So you can do it either way. The important part is that you do it. And then, every 90 days, you monitor your progress. So celebrate your achievements. I suggest celebrating on a regular basis. We get more of what we focus on. Focus on the good stuff. So every 90 days grab a new sheet of paper, redo the plan. You can tune into this video or you'll remember how to do it. Just review it and update it so that you have a current plan because you will be a different person 90 days from now than you are today. So here's the big question. When you look at your completed plan, ask if you execute this plan, if you stay on track, if you learn what you need to learn, do the research, and you're willing to do what it takes and take the action, will you reach your three-year vision? This is the part that's that um, might activate a little bit of a scary feeling that you're having about this because you should be able to look at that and go, yeah, if I did this stuff, totally I would get there and that brings up the next part of this which is what gets in the way you know yourself and you know what can get in the way I know for me I've done a number of plans over the years and one of the things that, that um, gets in my way is just pure forgetting I'll create the plan and then I'll lose it it'll get lost in a piece of in a shuffle of papers and then I'll, I'll uncover it eight months later and I'll go, oh wow, my plan, look at that, <laughs> haven't done anything on it. Um, <laughs> so there's a tendency to forget. Uh, there may be some things on there that uh, you're feeling a little bit fearful of. It's a scary step, it's a big old frog looking you in the face, it's um, feeling a little bit of self-doubt. Uh, that can lead to procrastination or maybe you just, just procrastinate. One of the biggest problems working um, on your own from home is it's just so easy to put stuff off. And actioning the things on a plan like this are the things that are important but not urgent. Um, it's not a client screaming for something. It's, it's not something that's easy. It's tough work on your own business and it's easy to procrastinate. And a lot of times, too, it's easy to get stuck. If you have things on that list, projects that you have to do some research or some learning around, it's easy to get stuck and to wonder, hey, am I doing this right? Is this really going to work? Um, you know, you have questions, not sure what to do. And then there's that lack of support. Sometimes it just feels really demoralizing and discouraging to work on your own without anyone cheering for you, that kind of thing. So having a lack of support can also get in the way. Uh, you may have things uh, outside of these things that I've listed that will get in your way. It's really, really, really important that you acknowledge whatever they are and to have a plan to overcome them. Otherwise, you know you're not going to get done what's in that plan. So this is why I've created the Marketing Action Club. It's all about executing that plan. I built this club to execute the plan, to help you execute the plan. And if the problem you have is about um, forgetting of the plan, procrastinating on the plan, not getting around to it, getting stuck, feeling discouraged, this is an answer. Um, how it works is every Friday morning, first thing in the morning, I get up and I send you an email to remind you that, hey, you have a plan and have you taken action on it? So you've got all day on Friday to get something done before the weekend. And if you've already done it, you get to pat yourself on the back saying, ooh, go me. Um, every Monday morning, we have a Marketing Action Club meeting. It's short. It's 30 minutes. And you get to tell the group in the chat 
what you've accomplished and you get cheering I will cheer for you the people on the call will type their responses into the chat to cheer for you but you get acknowledgement and support that yes you've gotten that stuff done and you'll have the opportunity to announce what you're going to do in the following week so it keeps that plan top of mind I'll also provide a little bit of education on marketing something encouraging and supportive to get you started on your week with a with a shot of momentum and you will get to be part of the private Facebook group if you would like to meet the rest of the community meet other people just like you working on plans just like yours you can share what you're up to you can ask for uh, support and feedback um, you can ask people to hold you accountable build yourself a, a little mastermind group meet other people post your website or your sales pages to get feedback ask for ideas whatever you'd like it's a great place to meet other like-minded people I price this to be super affordable it's 29 bucks a month uh, to stay accountable to your plan that should be a small investment in exchange for what you will get by executing what you've got written down if uh, if you had trouble putting together this plan if there you have a lot of places where you are stuck and confused uh, hey that's what I do uh, that's my business <laughs> I provide one-on-one -on -one support as well lots of different training programs as I mentioned earlier you can check out my website pattyk.com lots of information there and if you're really stuck and you're not sure what to do and you think you might need some one-on-one -on -one help I offer a free strategy session so shoot me an email we'll get together on the phone figure out you know where you're at where you want to go what's getting in the way and whether or not I can help you get past um, uh, what's blocking you and provide you the support that you need in order to execute your plan and to end up in that place that you've outlined as your three-year vision so good luck with your plan uh, if you have any questions if you'd like to be in contact with me it's patty at pattyk.com I would love to hear from you have a wonderful day